So welcome to lecture number 18 uh, of the course advanced geotechnical engineering module 2 the permeability and uh, seepage 7. So in this lecture we are going to discuss about uh, uh, some case study based on whatever we have uh, uh, discussed in the previous lectures and also I would like to present to you some assignment problems so that which can which can be used for uh, you know addressing the topics we have discussed in this particular module. So this lecture is uh, titled permeability and seepage uh, 7. So in order to you know address that case study which we are going to discuss let us uh, try to recollect what we discussed in the previous lecture in order to check against the piping failure for a single row of sheet pile wall then Tarjiki actually has given a method uh, for uh, checking the uh, stability of a soil prism in front of the row of a sheet pile wall. So if you consider in this uh, diagram if you have got a row of sheet pile wall having uh, you know head of water H1 here and H2 is the water and the downstream level. So the differential water level is H1 minus H2. So this particular portion of the uh, prism of soil will be subjected to uh, instability. So one of the methods uh, you know to prevent uh, this failure is to provide an apron or uh, nowadays uh, uh, in with uh, modern uh, applications with in, in, in involving uh, the, uh, the geosynthetics can also be explored. So by considering a soil prism on the downstream side of the uh, you know of having unit thickness and uh, having a section D is the depth of penetration and D by 2. So this particular uh, you know deliberation of D by 2 was actually arrived based on the model tests carried out. Uh, and then reported in this uh, subject area. So that is the possible failure zone and we knew that as the water flows uh, from this side uh, from left hand side to right hand side the water flows in the vertical direction. So uh, the uh, uplift pros, up, uplift uh, pressure uplift force exerted on the prism of this uh, soil having uh, d by 2 into 1 that is the permeter length of the uh, you know uh, prism is being considered that is the area over which the uplift pressure is acted is d by 2 into 1 and uh, the d is the you know the depth of penetration. So this is the self weight of the prism and this we are actually considering the self weight that is uh, the submerged unit weight in order to do that uh, the uh, head which is actually uh, uh, you know considered is the total head not the pore water pressure at the base of the prism. So using the flow net the hydraulic uplift, uplift pressure can be obtained. So as you know the uh, you know from the flow net the equipotential lines and then within that uh, uh, prism area over a distance of d by 2 the average head can be estimated. So which can be given as hm is equal to ha is the head at this point ha is the head at this point and HP is that at this point the average of this is can be obtained. So this is the uplift force so that is nothing but half gamma W into D into HM. HM is the average hydraulic head, uh, head at the average hydraulic head at the base of the soil pressure. So the self weight the submerged unit weight of the self weight of the soil is given by W dash is equal to half gamma dash D square. So from for the uh, factor of safety to in order to obtain the factor of safety against uh, heave or piping is nothing but uh, the resisting force is nothing but uh, the self weight of the prism and uh, disturbing force is nothing but the uplift acted by the acted on the at the base of the soil prism. So th this is obtained as factor of safety is equal to W dash by U where W dash is equal to half gamma dash D square divided by half gamma W D into HM by simplification of that we get D by HM into gamma dash by gamma W. But uh, however we knew that the critical hydraulic gradient is defined as Gs minus 1 by 1 plus E is equal to gamma dash by gamma W. So by substituting uh, for gamma dash by gamma W IC and writing HM by D as IM uh, 
uh, then we can write the factor of safety against the heave or piping is nothing but IC by IM which should be generally more than 4 or so. So what is required to be noted is that from the flow net diagram to find the average mean hydraulic head find the total head within the D by 2 zone horizontally. So this is required to be noted. Uh, then according to uh, Hazra method, uh, Hazra has given in uh, uh, 1935 the safety of hydraulic structures against piping. So this uh, you know I exit uh, was defined here, this is the maximum hydraulic gradient which is nothing but factor of safety is equal to IC by I exit. The I exit uh, can be done with two methods, one is that uh, you know the uh, penultimate portion of the flow net in the downstream direction that is delta H is the head drop let us say the last uh, uh, you know uh, two uh, equipotential lines that the potential drop between the two equipotential lines in the downstream direction over a length of that uh, uh, you know along that uh, flow direction. So that is one is that this can be obtained from the flow net according to HAR 1962. I exit can also be estimated by 1 by pi into H by D where H is the maximum hydraulic head which is nothing but whatever the difference which is actually there between upstream water level and downstream water level and D is the depth of penetration of the sheet pile wall which is actually taken as D is the depth of the penetration that is the penetration of the sheet pile wall. So for structures other than the single row of sheet pile walls. That means that if you have got a concrete dam, then uh, in order to increase against the safety against the uplift and all, it is practice to provide. Uh, uh, it is uh, it is a practice to provide cutoff walls in the particularly in the downstream direction as well as if required in the upstream direction. If required, uh, if the condition persists in the middle of the uh, you know concrete dam also, and one of the other measures also in order to divert the equipotential uh, here to prevent the flow uh, close to the dam here a provision of an impervious blanket is also another uh, alternative. But uh, if you have got a structures other than uh, row of sheet pile walls it has been recommended that uh, the soil wedge which actually occurs between uh, D dash and D where this over a length of D by 2 that remains same but here it will not be completely D but it is actually a depth of D dash. So this particular portion is actually subjected to uh, you know instability and the rest everything will remain same that is the uh, you know the self weight of the soil wedge and uplift force exerted in the horizontal direction by the water and this can be determined from the flow net from the uh, total head. So for the structures other than single row of sheet pile walls Tarzaghi 1943 recommended that the stability of several soil presence have to be taken that means that uh, of the sizes of D by 2 and D dash into 1 and can be investigated to find out the minimum factor of safety. So the according to Tarzigi's method it is that you have to one has to take uh, several soil presence and then determine uh, the one which actually gives the minimum factor of safety. Haar 1962 suggested that a factor of safety of 4 to 5 with D dash is equal to D should be sufficient for the safe performance of the structure again going back with uh, D dash is equal to D that is uh, equivalent to the depth of penetration is sufficient for the safe uh, performance of the structure. So with that uh, background let us look into a case study on the seepage analysis of a coffer dam. So this particular coffer dam is located uh, uh, on the bank of a river and uh, the real soil conditions are that it actually has got stratified soil deposits being close to the river and the coffer dam is generally constructed to facilitate the construction of the foundation for the a bridge which is being constructed. So in this particular case the coffer dam is intended to be constructed on the river bank where there is no flow of water. But if the uh, coffer dam is intended to be constructed um, uh, within the river where the flow of uh, river happens then uh, the issues relevant to the velocity of the flow 
and uh, then seepage analysis and the stability uh, against the wave forces all those things need to be considered in designing a coffer dam. So this particular coffer dam section is uh, having a typical uh, status like this and this is the uh, river bed uh, which is at uh, minus 0.81 meters and uh, the entire uh, strata from the river bed to the minus 8.31 meters about 7.5 meters it is with uh, a clay strata below that there is a uh, sand it is named as sand one so about 3 meters there is a sand layer and then uh, from uh, minus 11.31 to minus 18 meters there is a sand two layer that is uh, two types of sand layers are there and uh, the uh, one of the uh, you know row of a sheet pile wall of a coffer dam is shown here wherein uh, what is actually shown here is that this sheet pile wall penetration from is from plus 5.5 to minus 14.5 meters and above this uh, there is a backfill was placed and the upstream water level that is high tide level is uh, uh, plus 5.25 and the soil backfill is actually up to plus 5 meters. So plus 5 meters and then plus 5.25 meters is the high tide level and the uh, top of the sheet pile wall is plus 5.5, tip of the sheet pile wall is minus 14.5 meters it is penetrated into the sand layer. Uh, then here uh, there is uh, so you can look into this uh, this is the uh, you know source for the water this is the river bed and then water actually uh, tries to enter into this thing into into the coffer dam. So basically this uh, area is being created uh, to make uh, to enable the installation of uh, uh, foundations for example for this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, bridge pier foundation is founded on uh, piles. So in order to enable to construct the piles in the middle of the river or the close of the bank of the river uh, what uh, it is intended is that to create a land area that is achieved through a uh, coffer dam with uh, ensuring all uh, stabilities again structural stability as well as uh, uh, stability from the seepage point of view. And the question here is that uh, in this particular type of uh, sequences uh, there is uh, a, a need for uh, providing uh, uh, a PCC plug that is called precast uh, uh, this is nothing but plain cement concrete plain cement uh, concrete layer is provided. The question here involved is that uh, whether the uh, intended uh, thickness of 1 meter uh, of uh, PCC concrete plug is adequate or not. Uh, this, this is basically done uh, bas uh, to prevent uh, any uh, piping and uh, piping failure. And second thing also the resistance offered by the PCC uh, the plague uh, on uh, the stability is not considered. Uh, so here one interesting thing to be noted here is that uh, uh, there is a clay layer which is actually having very low permeability and then it is followed by uh, two sand layers. So uh, if the clay layer would not have been there there is a possibility that uh, you know the uh, situation of uh, the likelihood of failure for the uh, against piping. But let us look for the given strata here what would have been the what would be the uh, you know how the uh, you know fail, uh, uh, factor of safety is against uh, Terzaghi's method and uh, Hazra method will arrive. So here the bottom of the uh, uh, you know the uh, minus 4.50 meters is the downstream water level. So this is the intended water level which is to be maintained. And, uh, uh, and then minus uh, the, so 1 meter is the thickness of the uh, you know concrete plaque and this is the bottom of the pile. So above this the pile cap will come and then the bridge pier foundation will come. So once this uh, uh, foundation is actually constructed and once uh, the foundation is in place then what uh, happens is that the coffer dam is removed and uh, so that the foundation uh, 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 can be commissioned. So the below the sand layer that is below minus 18.1 meters again the clay layer is there. So this is actually assumed to be an impervious stratum so water actually flows in this direction. So this particular problem uh, the seepage analysis uh, has been carried out by using the uh, finite element based uh, software CW 2012 version and uh, the cross section adopted for the seepage analysis is shown in this uh, slide. 
as uh, I have told you that uh, this is actually having uh, uh, a length of about uh, uh, about 50 meters about uh, uh, about 40 meters in this direction and uh, the different soil layers have been represented here this is the clay layer this is the sand 1 and sand 2 and then this is uh, a clay layer. So, uh, and here this is the uh, the PCC plug which is actually uh, considered here the plain cement concrete uh, plug. So, based on this uh, the flow vectors can be obtained, but before that let us look into uh, material properties especially uh, the clay permeability uh, though the permeability uh, can be of the order of uh, 10 to the power of minus 9 meter per second, but however uh, uh, here it has been considered about 10 to the power of minus 7 phi into 10 to the power of minus 7 meter per second and sand is having uh, high permeability that is uh, 10 into 10 to the power of raise minus 3 meter per second and sand 2 is around 10 to the power of minus 3 meter per second and clay bottom which is at the bottom most clay layer that has been considered as uh, 1 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meter per second which is practically an impervious uh, layer. So, these are the flow vectors which are actually obtained from CW. Uh, wherein uh, you can see that uh, the trend of uh, uh, flow which a flow line which is actually coming from this direction to this direction. So, uh, the in order to do the factor of safety against uh, the stability like piping uh, then we require to know the consider a, a particularly uh, a prism of soil having uh, uh, horizontal distance d by 2 and d depth of penetration and then we have to see the factor of safety against the stability without and uh, with uh, um, the PCC plug. So, here the close view of coffer dam section is shown here uh, wherein you can see the cluster of uh, flow vectors uh, and uh, as uh, uh, the movement of the flow vectors towards the uh, downstream side of uh, uh, the sheet pile wall structure can be seen. So, here in this diagram uh, a check against the piping failure for that uh, to enable to that a block uh, diagram of uh, a prism of D depth of penetration from the uh, PCC plug to the tip of the sheet pile wall and uh, D by 2 distance from the uh, from the uh, tip of this uh, sheet pile wall horizontally was considered. So, this is the soil prism uh, which is actually having uh, you know gamma 1 h 1 gamma 2 h 2 gamma 3 h 3 and then gamma 4 h 4 or this particular uh, layers this is actually required to be considered. Then once we know the uh, total head uh, from the uh, flow net diagram we can actually calculate what is the average head here and determine the factor of safety against the piping. So, uh, this is the total head variation at the bottom of the soil wedge uh, with horizontal distance from the uh, tip of the sheet pile wall. So, total head variation at the bottom of the soil wedge with horizontal distance from the tip of the sheet pile wall as can be seen here the uh, this is the x ordinate which starts from the tip of the sheet pile wall horizontally. So, it can be seen that uh, the total head variation in the range of uh, 2.217 meters to 2.213. So, the average will be about 2.2 meters. So, the check against uh, uh, piping uh, one is the check one uh, Terzaghi's method. Let us consider a case of without a PCC slab of 1 meter thickness then factor of safety what we have defined is that d into d is the depth of penetration into gamma dash divided by h a into gamma w h a is the average hydraulic head at the base of the soil prism. So, based on that the factor of safety can be obtained. Uh, where the uh, d 1 into gamma 1 dash d 2 into gamma d t dash and d 3 into gamma 3. So, based on uh, the unit weights respective unit weights and by taking the submerged unit weights we can actually get the factor of safety uh, without a PCC slab. Here the PCC slab of 1, my 1, point, uh, 1 meter thickness is not provided. So, the factor of safety is found to be uh, just uh, uh, more than 4 that is 4.74 and uh, hence the section is uh, safe against the piping as far as the Terzaghi's method is concerned. Now, consider the same case with a PCC slab of 1 meter thickness. Once we consider the PCC slab of 1 meter thickness, we can see that here the gamma of PCC is taken as 23 kilonewton per meter cube of thickness 1 meter. 
with that uh, the average head 2.214 meters even in the previous case also the average head HA is equal to 2.214 meters with that the factor of safety uh, uh, increased to from 4.74 to 5.77 because of the thickness of the uh, because of the provision of uh, uh, PCC. But uh, in addition to the you know um, you know preventing against the uh, instability due to piping the provision of PCC also helps in uh, uh, preventing uh, giving a work, work platform for placement of the rigs and enabling the construction uh, at the site. So the factor of safety greater than 4 hence uh, the section is found to be safe against piping. Now let us look uh, by check by Azra's method the same problem. So here uh, we can actually obtain from the flow net I H uh, that is the delta H the head loss between two equipotential lines in the penultimate uh, uh, portion of the uh, you know flow net in the downstream side that is can be obtained by delta H is equal to 0.5 meters and L is equal to 0.96 that is the flow element length with that I exit can be obtained as 0.52. So then we can determine I critical I critical as nothing but gamma dash by gamma w where gamma dash is nothing but the sand unit weight which is actually taken as 20 kilo per meter cube 20 minus 9.81 divided by 9.81 the critical hydraulic gradient is 1.03. So the factor of safety uh, uh, is nothing but I critical by I exit it is 1.03 by 0.52. So the what we obtained is about 1.98 is actually close to 2. So the remarks on the case study what we discussed is that the presence of clay layer from about a 4.5 meters from minus 4 meters base of the PCC plug to minus 8.3 meter helps in preventing the pumping failure towards the dumpstream side and this observation is based on the coefficient of permeability of 1 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meter per second. Uh, 10 to the power of minus 7 meter per second or 1 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meter per second clay. And uh, if you look into this uh, the adoption of uh, 1 meter thick uh, PCC plug um, on the downstream side was found to be adequate and uh, with the provision of the PCC plug the factor of safety against the piping increases. And uh, second thing is that uh, it also enables uh, the construction and uh, installation of the piles can be done with the ease. So having uh, discussed the problems uh, uh, you know the case study relevant to uh, the CPS analysis of a copper dam uh, problem and having introduced two uh, different uh, problems uh, and different concepts in module 2 uh, pertaining to permeability and seepage. So in this uh, particular, uh, uh, particular uh, lecture where assignment problems for the module 2 are presented and uh, some selected problems are given so that uh, the concepts can be uh, revised. Uh, the problem 1 it goes like this for the test setup, test setup for the test set, uh, setup shown in the figure below we need to determine the following one is that the flow rate that is per unit width through the soil seepage velocity if there is a 50 percent of the head causing the flow at A determine uh, 3 is that pore water pressure at A and 4 is the seepage force per unit volume at A assume that the flow takes place in the vertical direction only and the soil is fully saturated. So in the problem 1 the for the test setup which is shown determine the flow rate determine the seepage velocity and determine the if there is a 50 percent of the head causing the flow at A determine the pore water pressure at A and 4 the seepage force per unit volume at A assuming that the flow takes place in the vertical direction only and the soil is fully saturated. The setup is actually shown here uh, wherein you actually have the soil which is K uh, having uh, 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 meter per second. The void ratio is actually given as E is equal to 0.68 and uh, here uh, this particular horizontal distance is uh, 3 meters and uh, this height is about 3 meters and this width is about 1 meters. And here at the point A is at that midpoint of the height of 3 meters and in the given problem the datum is actually shown here. So this is the this water level is actually shown as the datum. So this, this height of water above this level is about 0.6 meters. 
so the difference uh, in height of water is 3, 3, 3 meters plus 0.6 meters that is 3.6 meters. So uh, this is the you know uh, as far as the problem uh, 2 is uh, problem 1 is concerned in problem 2 uh, the test setup is actually shown here uh, which is actually having uh, two layers of soils upper soil and lower soil and uh, this limb is actually uh, having uh, a certain horizontal distance and it is actually height at a height of 0.3 meter uh, uh, you know 0.3 meter a constant uh, water flow is actually maintained here the upper soil layer is having the thickness of 0.25 meter and uh, lower soil layer having a uh, thickness of about 0.2 meter and this is level A this is level B the level B is interface between soil lower soil and uh, upper soil and uh, here there is uh, um, that is the level C at the top surface of the upper soil. So the problem statement uh, runs like this in the test setup shown in the figure below or figure which is on the right side of this uh, slide two different granular soils are placed in the perimeter and flow is allowed to take place under a constant head of 30 centimeters. Determine the total head and pressure head at point A that is A B if 30 percent of the total head is lost as the water flows upward through the lower soil layer what is the total head and pressure head at B. So water flows vertically up in this direction because this level of this limb is actually maintained at this level. So if the permeability of the lower soil layer is 3 into 10 to the power of minus 4 meter per second calculate the quantity of water per second flowing through the unit area of the soil and what is the quotient of the permeability of the upper soil layer. So we need to calculate uh, what is the quotient of the permeability of the uh, upper soil layer bottom lower soil layer permeability is given and uh, so this problem uh, is very interesting and you can attempt based on the concepts we discussed in the uh, this module. And the problem 3 uh, statement uh, wherein uh, a sand aquifer is uh, present at the depth of 5 meter below the lake in which water depth is 1 meter two less uh, pervious soil uh, overlie the sand aquifer as shown in the figure the soil 2 is twice as pervious as soil 1 that means that soil 2 is uh, more pervious having more permeability than soil 1 the aquifer is under artesian pressure and it is observed that this pressure is gradually increasing. So in which soil particularly either soil 1 or soil 2 will be the effective vertical stress first falls to 0 that is where the quicksand condition can come and what at what value of piezometric head measured at the point B uh, will this occur. So the uh, cross section of the figure is like this you have got a sand aquifer which is actually having a artesian uh, pressure and uh, and here uh, this is uh, this level is 1 meter this is 0. So this soil 1 is having a 2 meter thickness soil 2 is having a 3 meter thickness and this is a point P is 1 meter below the soil 2 bottom of the soil 2 and uh, here is actually having a hydraulic gradient I1 I2 gamma 18 kN per meter cube gamma 20 kN per meter cube. So soil 1 is actually having a permeability K1 and I1 soil 2 is having a permeability K2 and I2. So uh, wherein we can actually calculate what is the uh, you know which soil will actually first uh, undergo quicksand uh, condi condition or the effective vertical stress first falls to 0 and what value of the piezometric head measured at point P uh, at, at, at will this occur. So this is uh, you know uh, uh, based on the concepts we discussed can be attempted. Problem 4 uh, figure A which is actually shown in the next slide uh, shows a reservoir and a sheet pile wall cutoff where uh, figure B shows the corresponding flow net for this problem. So uh, in figure A and figure B a cross section as well as the flow net is also given utilizing the information given in these figures compute the following one is the rate of seepage loss for reservoir per unit width of the sheet pile wall two pore water pressure at A, B and C as shown in the figure which we are going to see and the factor of safety against uh, boiling in the heave zone immediately to the right of the sheet pile wall this is just what we discussed uh, in this lecture and draw uh, schematically the flow net and identify the lines uh, in the given figure keeping in view of the boundary conditions. So 
So, here uh, you are required to uh, this is the cross section which is given impervious sand a fine sand layer. Uh, having uh, isotropic uh, permeability k x is equal to k z is equal to 4 beta per day and gamma c at is equal to 20 kilon per meter cube. The thickness of the stratum is 5 meters and uh, here the tip of the sheet pile wall is at this point at this point and, uh, and this is uh, 4 meter below this upstream soil level and this 2 meter below the downstream uh, soil level. And uh, this is the water level at the downstream side is 1.5 meter, upstream side is 2 meter above the uh, upstream soil level. So, the difference is about 2.5 meters and this is the end which is P, P, P dash and this is the end of Q, Q dash. And uh, we need to determine the point A is here, point B is shown here and point C is here. We need to determine from the flow net, the flow, uh, the pore water pressures uh, from the flow net diagram. And so, based on the, uh, the datum can be selected accordingly and then pressures at A, B and C can be determined. So, this is the flow net which is given. So, this is the point A and this is the point B which is actually marked and this is the point uh, C. So, the tentative flow net which actually shown here. So, with that uh, based on this the problem 4 can be attempted and, uh, and by considering uh, both Terzaghi's method and Hazra's method one can actually calculate what is the factor of safety against uh, piping failure and with that uh, uh, the safety of a stability hydraulic stability of a structure can be estimated. And uh, in the problem 5 which we have discussed in the previous lecture the similar problem and here in this uh, section an dam section is shown below we need to draw the flow net and calculate the seepage. So, here the two layers of soils are given and this earthen dam is constructed with a soil having a low permeability k1 uh, 2 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meter per second. And uh, the soil uh, on the right hand side uh, is uh, k2 is equal to 2 times k1 that is uh, it is uh, 2 times more permeable than uh, 2 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meter per second that is k2 ok. And uh, the slopes are actually having 1 vertical 2 horizontal and uh, the upstream water level is 30 meters, a free board of 4 meter is actually maintained and uh, the crest width is about 6 meters. So, from here to here is 3 meters, from here to here is uh, 3 meters, from here to here the down uh, upstream end uh, upstream toe to the this end is 90 meters horizontal distance. So, with this the entire uh, uh, configuration can be constructed. And uh, this can be solved by using the concepts we discussed like uh, flow net for the uh, seepage through a zoned at the dam. And we said that the soil for the upstream half of the dam has a permeability k1 and uh, soil for the downstream uh, has a permeability of here it should be uh, k2. In this example it is shown as phi k1, but here it is uh, 2 k1. So, with that uh, by using k1 by k2 uh, is equal to k1 by k2 is equal to 1 by 2 we can actually get uh, by putting B1 by E1 L1 is equal to 1, we can get K1 by K2 is equal to 1 by 2, B2 by L2 is equal to 1 by 2. So, what will happen is that the breadth to the length ratios will be uh, of uh, ratio 1 by 2 that is on the downstream side here you will have a rectangles we having breadth to length ratios 1 is to 2. So, this by using this concept uh, the uh, flow net for the uh, CPS through a zoned earth, earth dam having two different permeabilities can be constructed. So, in the problem uh, 6 uh, a levy section is shown. So, here a levy section is constructed uh, levy is generally constructed is an embankment which is constructed along the uh, river uh, to prevent uh, you know the river water entering into the, uh, the downstream side of the uh, land. So, for that uh, a 12 meter uh, about 25 meters high embankment has been constructed uh, or a levee section has been constructed for uh, 1 is 2 with a 1 is 2 2 slopes both upstream side and downstream side. A free board of uh, 2 meter was actually maintained and 23 meters is the upstream water level. Here it is required to indicate what is a b whether, uh, whether it is the equipotential line or flow line and uh, e d whether it is a equipotential line or flow line and uh, BD whether it is a equipotential line or flow line 
need to be identified and once uh, there is identified with a permeability of k is equal to 0.3 meter per day because this can be achieved when we are actually having isotropic permeability can be achieved uh, once uh, we actually get uh, a material from the uh, single uh, burrow pit area and here the drainage layer is actually placed uh, and then this length is about uh, 2.7 meters uh, and then the thickness generally is provided about 0.7 meters or 0.6 meters of the order and then this uh, will prevent the you know the prevent the phreatic surface coming into the uh, into the downstream side and causing the piping failure and also enhances the stability. So this uh, length is given as 112 meters and this uh, height is about uh, 25 meters and the crest width of 12 meters and the downstream uh, height is about 50 meter the downstream horizontal distance is 50 meters. So uh, what we need to do is that uh, what is the volume of the water lost through the levy along each kilometer in uh, meter cube per day that means that because as we know that we do uh, so if uh, water loss is actually uh, observed more than the permissible one then the it can actually has have an, uh, an impact on the stability. So, so here uh, a kilometer length of a these levy sections run uh, kilometers uh, length so per kilometer length what is the uh, uh, permeability uh, what is the seepage lost or water lost can be determined. And in the problem uh, 7 uh, wherein uh, we are actually having a, a situation that uh, uh, we need to draw the uh, seepage under the structure uh, which is the figure which is shown below. So draw the flow net for the seepage under the structure detailed in the figure below and determine the quantity of seepage. So the quotient uh, of permeability to the soil is 5 into 10 to the power of minus 5 meter per second that is the soil which is actually here uh, this is the soil portion and this is uh, an impervious uh, zone which is not horizontal which is actually having a certain inclination and with the configuration of that is given here this is uh, the tip of this hydraulic structure is 7.2 meters 7.25 meters here and here it is 9 meters. So what is the uplift force on the base of the structure so that is uh, you know required to be determined and this horizontal distance of the hydraulic structure is given as 8 meters and uh, this length is about 9 meters and this distance is about 2.5 meters the head of water which is nothing but which causes the flow is about 3 meters. So this is according to Craig uh, 2004. So in the uh, in this slide uh, where a typical uh, uh, flow net diagram is actually given here for your convenience and uh, the scale is also shown here and this is the impervious stratum and this impervious this being impervious stratum this becomes the uh, flow line. So as you can see uh, that uh, a flow net is drawn where uh, the head of water uh, where here the head of the water which is available for this uh, uh, equipotential line is about 3 meters by the time it actually comes out it is actually 0. So equipotential line uh, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 equipotential lines are there and then you know uh, by considering uh, the orthogonal uh, principle uh, one can actually calculate uh, draw the uh, curve, uh, you know uh, curvilinear squares which involves uh, which gives uh, uh, the flow net. So this is a flow channel 1 and flow channel 2 and this can be approximated as a flow channel uh, about uh, uh, of a 50 percent of its distance. So it can be now total number of flow channels can be around uh, 2.5. So we can actually calculate the seepage and then by knowing by knowing the uh, you know uh, the uh, pore water pressure along the horizontal distance uh, one can actually determine what is the pore water pressure distribution. So if uh, the structure really say uh, is empty or uh, under construction there is a possibility of the uplift against the stability. So in during all stages of uh, uh, the construction on all stages of the life of the structure the safety against the uplift is required to be ensured particularly when uh, the hydraulic structure is empty there is a susceptibility of the uplift failure that uh, can be observed from this particular problem. So in this particular module we actually discussed about uh, various concepts about the permeability and the seepage issues and we have actually have discussed about the types of flows that is uh, one dimensional flow and two dimensional flow 
and uh, three dimensional flow though the three dimensional flow is uh, not uh, very common but uh, the with the three dimensional flow uh, particularly the conditions or examples are that wherein we actually have uh, radial flow nets which can come particularly if you are having uh, uh, a, uh, a, a drain which is actually having provided uh, to drain the water. So in a given plane it can actually come the radial flow nets can come. So wherein the uh, at the surface of the where the water source is there the uh, highest uh, equipotential line will be there the close to the uh, drain surface where it is feeding water away from the particular location where that will be having a uh, the, the penultimate equipotential line and uh, the flow lines perpendicular to that. So it causes some sort of a net of uh, radial uh, flow nets for the, a pipeline or a drain running into the soil. And then we also have considered uh, uh, like uh, the theory behind uh, this uh, seepage and we actually have said that uh, for a three dimensional flow uh, the Laplace uh, equa for three dimensional flow having kx not equal to ky not equal to kz is not equal to 0. We said that kx dou square u by dou x square plus ky dou square u by dou y square plus kz dou square u by dou z square is equal to 0. Uh, as kx, ky, kz not equal to 0 in that case uh, the three dimensional Laplace equation is that uh, for the flow is that dou square u by dou x square plus dou square u by dou y square plus dou square u by dou z square is equal to 0. But uh, as we have discussed that uh, many of our uh, uh, structures like uh, we have um, levees, uh, earthen dams and uh, sheet pile walls they actually can be idealized and analyzed by using two dimensional flow conditions. In that case the governing uh, Laplace equation is dou square u by uh, dou x square plus dou square u by dou z square is equal to 0 that is x is the horizontal distance uh, ordinate and z is the vertical uh, distance ordinate. And uh, uh, once uh, in order to satisfy this uh, the, uh, you know this uh, condition uh, the solution for this uh, can be worked out by using uh, finite difference method or finite element method and then we have discussed the finite element based method uh, analysis by using uh, a construction of the flow nets manually or by using a program uh, uh, seepage analysis based uh, program uh, called seepw 2012 and that uh, uh, constructs the flow nets as per the as uh, the satisfied for different conditions. Suppose if you are having uh, the uh, iso uh, non isotropic uh, that is axisymmetric uh, the permeability is asymmetric permeabilities that is having per different permeabilities in x and z directions. In that uh, case uh, we said that uh, when kx is not equal to kz then uh, we need to convert that uh, uh, the, uh, the into a, a transformed case this condition is called transformed condition and wherein uh, kt the transformed permeability is given as root over kx kz and then once the section is transformed then the analysis is done in a similar way as was done from the isotropic case. And then further we discussed that if you are actually having uh, a uh, non homogeneous soils that means that soils having uh, different permeabilities like k1, k2, k3. Suppose if, if uh, the flow net is intended to be constructed by using CW, the uh, particular uh, uh, software uh, takes automatically but otherwise uh, for uh, different conditions like entry conditions and exit conditions need to be understood. So for that we have studied with uh, soil, two homogeneous soils when you are actually having two different permeabilities when k1 k1 is soil 1 and k2 is the soil 2 permeability when k1 is less than k2 and when what will happen when the k1 greater than k2 then uh, uh, subsequently we actually have done some uh, uh, problems and thereafter we actually have introduced like how to introduce the uh, you know uh, based on the flow net diagrams how to calculate the factor of safety against the hydraulic stability of the structures from the piping uh, point of view. Then we have two methods one is the Terzaghi's method and uh, uh, we also have discussed about the Hazra's method and uh, based on this uh, once it is done then the stability can be uh, against uh, uh, piping can be ensured. And the, in the finally we actually have discussed about a uh, case study which is in one of the uh, coffer dam construction uh, for a, uh, uh, for a uh, bridge pier foundation was discussed. And basically here the idea is that with the adequacy of the 
intended uh, the PCC plug which is actually planned whether that 1 meter thick is adequate or 1.5 meters. In fact, uh, which I have not presented, but if you have a case situation of say 1.5 meter, the factor of safety against uh, stability increases that makes uh, you know um, uh, the more conservative. But however, it is found that uh, because of the presence of the clay layer and uh, clay layer, uh, it is uh, uh, adequate to actually have uh, a thickness of about uh, um, 1 meter for the, uh, the downstream side. And uh, this actually has two purposes, one is to prevent uh, failure against the piping, the other one is uh, uh, also to enable construction for the installing foundations for the pier. And uh, second, uh, uh, further we actually have discussed about uh, uh, some assignment problems uh, for you. So, based on this, uh, you know, uh, in this module, uh, uh, we try to look into the all aspects uh, uh, which are actually framed.